Well, let's go to Canberra now. Joining us live is the Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg. Treasurer, good to see you. Thanks for joining us this morning. So why didn't you go to the march yesterday? Well, I didn't go to the march uh, because uh, the Prime Minister uh, offered a meeting uh, to the leaders of uh, that march and they uh, turned him down and I think that was unfortunate. Uh, but I think yesterday was a powerful moment uh, outside the parliament. Uh, attention was brought to a very important issue, an issue that we take very seriously, an issue that we're acting on, namely domestic violence, uh, sexual violence against women. Um, we must do better, we will do better as a nation in tackling this scourge. The problem is that women feel like they're not being heard and while this tidal wave of tears and rage swept across the country, some of the most senior members of the government didn't go. It's not exactly a great message to send. Well, as I said, Pete, the Prime Minister, in good faith, uh, offered an opportunity to meet with the organisers, um, to hear their concerns, for them to outline their issues to both him and the Minister for Women, and unfortunately, that was turned down. Now, there was obviously a mass gathering yesterday bringing attention to a very important issue, but it's an, an issue that we're acting on. Uh, we're putting in place a series of measures across the country. We're investing uh, billions of dollars in order to tackle um, domestic violence, including launching a new information campaign to help educate Australians about that scourge. Um, this is something we are all collectively um, in together and something that we all must do something about. Christian Porter says that uh, he will testify in a rape trial. Does that put an end to any argument for an independent inquiry? Well, you're not going to expect me to, to comment on matters that are now before the courts. Uh, both Christian Porter and the ABC will have their day in court. Have you spoken to him lately? Yes, I have. I've stayed in regular contact with both him and Linda Reynolds, and I look forward to them both joining us in Cabinet again soon. He, he did mention that he was having difficulties mentally uh, during that press conference that we saw a few weeks ago. Has, has there been any improvement on that front during your your conversations with him? I actually found that he was in um, good spirits, um, despite the challenges uh, that he has faced over recent weeks. I mean, events of of recent weeks would take their toll on anyone, Pete, as you could understand in the glare of the nation spotlight uh, and then that focus on him. Uh, and of course, you know, he has vigorously uh, denied um, those accusations against him and now he uh, and the ABC will both be able to put their case in court. OK. Uh, more countries overnight, Treasurer, are halting the AstraZeneca rollout because of blood clots. What concerns do you have, if any, about that? Well, yesterday, um, the Prime Minister, the Health Minister, uh, the Chief Medical Officer uh, and other um, senior members of the government, including myself, met with the uh, Chief Medical Officer and, and heard firsthand how the, the, the vaccine rollout will continue. Uh, and both the European equivalent of our TGA as well as the World Health Organisation has said that the AstraZeneca vaccine is effective and they have not uh, found any causal link between uh, the, uh, the vaccine itself and, and, and blood clots. And we also know that in the case of the United Kingdom, where more than 12 million doses of the, of the AstraZeneca vaccine has been rolled out, we haven't seen those trends or patterns uh, or problems uh, across, that, um, across that community. So we will continue to proceed uh, with uh, the vaccine rollout of AstraZeneca. And of course, that is a vaccine that we are making here in Australia through CSL. OK, no plans to halt at this stage. Uh, new figures show the huge effect that tax cuts are having on our economy, Treasurer. Inflation, though, is still a problem, not to mention wage growth at record lows. Is there any plan to bring forward Stage 3 tax cuts? Well, Stage 3 is, as you say, legislated uh, tax cuts, and it was only last week that the Leader of the Opposition was asked in a public gathering at a, a business summit to confirm his, uh, op his party's commitment to those legislated tax cuts and he wouldn't give that guarantee. We, as a coalition, fundamentally believe in Australians earning more and keeping more of what they earn. Already $9 billion in tax cuts has gone into the pockets of the hard-working Australian families. Another $12 billion will go out. That's a total of $21 
billion dollars, a very significant amount of money. And if you're a teacher or a nurse on $60,000, you are paying $2,160 less tax compared to what you were paying in 2017-18. This is a significant boost uh, to people's household disposable incomes and will help generate more economic activity. We have also legislated in that stage three of the tax cuts a significant structural reform where we're abolishing a whole tax bracket and you'll see 95% of taxpayers pay a marginal rate of no more than 30 cents in the dollar. One big tax bracket, Pete, between $45,000 and $200,000. That's a significant structural reform and it's time that the Labor Party committed to the tax cuts that we've already passed through the parliament. OK, but are you going to bring forward stage three at all? We've got no plans to bring forward stage three. Um, okay. Stage three is legislated, uh, and, and I think that's important. What we did do in the most recent budget is we brought forward stage two. People are seeing the benefit of that with more money in their pockets right okay. now. OK. Treasurer Josh Frydenberg, appreciate your time as always. Talk to you soon. My pleasure. Well, coming up, Germany. <laughs>